Just accept it. There we go. Okay, recording accepted. Brilliant. Okay, well, um, Kingston, do you want to do some introductions? Yeah, excellent. Um, welcome everyone to this fourth edition um, of the e-business series. Um, so thanks again to Hunters Hill Council for, for having us. Um, this particular session, we're going to go through lead generation uh, and it'll be myself and Rachel Ward who will be presenting. So I guess you'll see our faces here. Uh, Rachel and I uh, have been at uh, the Digital Mavens for a little while. It's um, my business. I, I'm a local resident of the Hunt Hills Hill area. Uh, my kids go to school locally here and uh, you probably see me around the shops. Um, <laughs> I probably walked into some of your shops, but uh, we're going to jump to the, the next slide. Okay. Um, you know, from a, a digital perspective, we've been very lucky that uh, we, we've worked with a number of really large clients uh, and, and we are um, a, a digital uh, specialist agency. So you can see here that we work across everything from um, strategy development to actually building uh, digital assets and, and platforms to designing, creating content, and then um, running uh, e-commerce and, and finding uh, prospects and leads for, for businesses. Uh, and then also uh, providing advice on uh, marketing technology uh, for businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and this for the last 13, 14 years. Um, and uh, we've done for you know, large businesses and small businesses, uh, non national, uh, national uh, Australian economies, and government as well. Uh, as well as small businesses, so it's about 13 years, very good. A mix of clients and investors that we can able to share uh, a lot of those experiences with you. Uh, mm -hmm. um, it can help you with thinking about your business uh, and generating new customers and leads uh, for, for your organization. I think just, uh, just looking at his name, Kingston, and thinking, you know, it doesn't matter how big your business is. So many of these people came to us with the same concept that we're going to discuss today, which is, how do I get more customers or how do I attract the right customers? Um, and it's yeah, just interesting seeing so many people that we've done it for. And, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a small, big, um, small, medium or, or large business, it's always a, an obstacle um, that people really have to plan around. Brilliant. Um, so on that, then our agenda for today uh, is broken up into a few parts. So we're going to touch on really how to attract customers and set yourself up for success with some kind of basic hygiene to make sure you're as accessible as possible to the people that might be looking for you. Uh, we're going to then dive into how to find customers. So really go out there and um, try and source more of your target audience. And we're going to touch on the marketing funnel, customer journeys, and content marketing, which is a technique we like to use. Um, and then we'll look into lead generation itself and give you some techniques, um, both organic that are low cost and paid that might be higher cost for um, big campaigns that you might want to do and run through some techniques. Um, and then lastly, we're just going to touch on managing customers, uh, which is the big thing. So, you know, the choice of platforms, what automations you can set up to save yourself time, um, and also tagging and segmentation, um, which is some best practice. Um, so with that, let's jump into the first section, which is attracting customers. Um, Kingo, I'll, I'll jump over to you for this one. Yeah. So I guess in, in terms of starting the whole lead generation process, one of the questions we always start with is, is the customer? because that's who we're trying to find, that's who we're trying to attract. Um, and it, it, it seems very obvious, but the question is, do you actually understand who the customer is and which customer you want? Um, and it's, it, it is an idea that you actually don't want every single customer that's out there. Uh, if you can choose and identify the one that um, is right for your business, then you need to find more of those. So I guess a couple of questions here is, is as you're going through this process and you're thinking about your business, um, try and yeah, I, uh, picture in your mind, who is your ideal customer? Um, it could be segmented into different groups. And so there's ones who, who might be the most ideal. Um, you know, what are they like? Um, you know, how old are they? How much money do they spend with you? What's so unique about them? Uh, then you've got what we would call the mass or the average customer. So they might come in and, and maybe purchase uh, every now and again from you. Uh, however, there's lots and lots of them. Um, the other part is also making sure that you have your anti-customer. So understanding who specifically isn't a very good fit for your business um, so that then you know that um, you, you don't want to spend any money or waste any effort trying to, to bring those people in. Uh, and it might just be, for example, that if you do run, um, say, a, a children's wear or a, a baby shop, then, you know, obviously um, you want to be spending a lot of your time uh, focusing on maybe expectant mothers uh, as they come through, 
um, or in um, families with, with young children um, versus those who are single um, and, and really are there maybe because they're buying a, a, a gift once every while for someone. So mm. I, I guess it's, it's understanding who, who is that ideal and then from there um, you can put them up. Um, typically we also like to paint a bit of a picture around them so you can cut out little images, uh, put it up on your board and then you can go, that, that is the person who uh, we want more from. The next question is then asking, well, why would they come and buy from you? Uh, and, and it is a, a more of a business question because there's lots of other businesses out there that potentially sell the same thing. Um, even with online now, uh, that's increased the number of competitors that you have. So you really have to have a think about this, this reason that they would come to you and buy from you uh, and then, you know, write that down. The next third question is then understanding your business again is where and when do you make money? Uh, which products, which services actually bring customers in, um, potentially which has the higher margins or revenue, uh, or which do you actually sell the most of? Uh, and again, understanding those, you can start to put together uh, this little picture of um, the, the ideal environment, the ideal customer, um, and what they will buy coming to your business. And then the last question, again, is focusing on the customer uh, and trying to think about what we call the, the customer purchase journey. So um, you think about it yourself. If you're going out and buying something, what is that journey from, oh, I need to, to buy something? Um, and, and what do you go through in terms of those steps um, until you actually purchase? So from a consumer's perspective, people who are buying maybe a bag of chips or some food, obviously that um, process is quite quick. You're, you've got a trigger, you're feeling hungry, maybe it's that time of the day, it's you know lunchtime. So you make a quick impulsive decision and in a very quick succession, you've actually purchased something. Mm -hmm. um, the other is true for potentially business customers where it's actually a bit of a long drawn out considered process. So you're signing, you'll potentially sign a contract, you're purchasing a service that may have a large amount of money attached to it. It is quite important. And so that decision-making process, the purchase journey that they go through will actually be very different. Um, and so understanding who your customers are, understanding what they'll buy from you, and then understanding that process is, is really important to then get you off on the right foot. Mm. Absolutely. Okay, so um, yeah, we've kind of put three questions here that you can ask yourself to kind of self audit, you know, are you making it as easy as possible for your customers to find you? So is your business easy to find? And that can come in many different forms, both digital and traditional. So for example, I think if you came to one of our other workshops, I think we probably mentioned a few times Google My Business which you can see on the left hand side here for us. Um, that's a really great tool that's completely customizable really to what your business offers. The call to actions you can put on there can be specific to what you want to do. Do you want phone calls? Do you want emails? Do you want clicks through to website? Um, but I think that really does set you apart from when people have what we call intent. They're either searching for your business. Um, so they're just trying to find where you are, how to engage with you. Having a profile set up like this um, is really great. It's really identifiable um, and it takes up a lot of real estate on the search engine results page, as you probably all know, from your search on Google or Bing or, or other sites like that. And so that's something we definitely highly recommend. Um, that also kind of feeds into um, the website's SEO. Now, SEO is something that does take um, quite a lot of nurturing over time, but making sure that your website is set up to you know, set up success and it will turn up in search engine results when someone is looking for you is really important. Um, and another tip when it comes to SEO is making sure that you are utilizing all of the um, characters and spaces that you're given with things like your meta tags and meta descriptions. So when you're turning up on the search engines, you're taking up as much room as possible and you've got as many of the call to actions as possible. Um, and that's all stuff that is free for you to do. And that's dependent on how your website is set up. Um, similarly here on the right, beauty salon, Nimi, you want to get hearing for things like that. Uh, it's less, you know, typing the business name, but it could be gift shop near me or, you know, coffee shop near me. And we want to make sure you guys are turning up for those searches. Again, that does relate back to having a Google business set up and um, all of the information possible so that you can automatically appear in these search results. Um, another thing to consider in the middle here, you can see our Instagram account. Uh, but if you do have a business profile on Instagram, then you do have the option to have some call to actions on your profile so ours says message sometimes that could be a book now button if you've got a restaurant or you know a salon people want to make booking with you um but there's different things you can play around your social platform as well um another thing on social media is making sure that your handle which is your name on uh, your social media accounts is as close to your business name as you can get 
you see we've had to put some underscores in ours, um, the digital mavens, um, because you know, there were some competitors out there with similar naming functions that are already taken it. But yeah, look at your handles, does it really spell out who you are, what you are, your business identity? Because a lot of people will be searching you on there as well. I personally do it a lot for restaurants. You know, if I'm looking up something that I want to try out, I'll always go and scope out the Instagram and kind of see, you know, aesthetically what it looks like. Is that somewhere that I want to go? Um, and yeah, just making sure that you're easily found on social is definitely a great tactic to have. And then obviously we've got here from a local area marketing perspective, um, it's making sure that people know you're open. You're there. Is there a special offer that you can put in your display window? Um, so those are the things you can be doing on a more local basis as well, which I'm sure many of you already are. So this is a big one. Um, is your business easy to contact? So we don't expect you to be you know, on, on call 24 seven, waiting for your next customer to call up. Um, but there are lots of different things that you could try to make sure that when someone is trying to source, you know, uh, have a conversation with you, uh, get some, ask a question, book something, um, you're making it as easy as possible for them, but also a nice experience for them. So um, a few different ways to do that. Again, I'm just going to say Google Business. You can see that website directions called PS. Really cool that very accessible for you to get in touch. And um, some of the websites might also consider is chatbots are very common these days. You know, there isn't someone necessarily sat behind a keyboard all the time replying. I think this is a behaviour that a lot of people have got used to. Uh, you know, for frequently asked questions. So uh, there's lots of integrations that you can put on websites to make this happen. I see experience to your customers, but also very easy to use as well. Um, in addition to that, something you can do on your social media and the platforms that you're currently using them to engage with people, you get a lot of messages on social media, is you can set up automated responses on um, Facebook and Instagram. Now, this is a really great tool uh, for a few reasons. I think it's a really nice um, first engagement for the business. So, hey, you know, thanks for your message, and um, we'll get back to you as soon as we can, or we'll get to the 40 hours, whatever kind of standard um, customer service um, guidelines are. Um, just to kind of have that first touch of engagement and not just have a message in one way, oh, you know, never back to them. Uh, that's not worse than that, really. I think from a customer perspective, like, you know, friends say, oh, you message that business at the end of the table, or you can't send anything back. You can't send anything back, but then you're not trying to make a customer else. So, the automated responses are really great tool for this on the Instagram. You can also send yourself away on Facebook and Instagram, and that would be one of the messages. And again, that's a great way to make sure customers have expectations when it's about how people expect to get back from you in 24 hours. You know, you have a very long period of time to get back to customers. The expectations now with, you know, people especially on Facebook or on an email, means that window, you know, it's short, it's short. So these are great tactics to kind of help and nudge that lead before you really get a chance to directly engage with them. Um, in addition to that, you know, we'll phone, phone on there, you know, and making sure your phone number is always on the internet, it's easy to find. Uh, if you're not on the phone, you have a message service, you're checking that regularly. Um, Otherwise, my email is not coming back from them. Um, and you can see it in an email response. So we'll touch a little bit more on this in the presentation. But also, making emails are automated kind of you know, social media response. Um, anytime someone engages with you, there's a chance you send an automated video. Thanks for getting inside. I'm working on this. You know, I think do it. I think it's great for people to know that. Um, and they're not just waiting to hear from you. It's that first contact. And you'll get back to them. They'll be a cool email. But that'll be next. Um, the final thing is that it's always easy to contact. You can see here uh, the header of um, our website. And it's just ensuring all of those touch points on the homepage to direct the user to whatever kind of um, preferred communication channel you want to contact. So let's contact us with our website. You have the email address. And it works now. So you've got to go with you. You can speak to him. Uh, we've also got a Facebook Instagram meeting. You can have a couple of other meetings and see what we're working on at the moment. We're working a bit. What we're talking about. So just making sure it's manageable for business and then the more chance there are, the more it's managed. And you've got them. And if that is the place where you're going to be customers, all you want to be, you've got to learn to decide that. Definitely take it as accessible as possible for people to go and touch you. Okay. And I'm not touching the session. It's critical. So um, it's just making sure wherever possible, you're firstly giving customers a chance to review your service, your business experience with you, and encouraging it. You know, you see what they're using, what they're doing themselves. And you see here on top left hand side, Google My Business Review, which is a great website to try and get some star ratings for your Trivialize their pages. Can we use the parties on the website? If you're your business, obviously because college students try and get more details on these websites. And there's a few things that help with. Obviously, there's no And I often put stuff in for because you can see it's something you're looking. And you're trivializing that. You can go to people or go to a website. You can enjoy it one day again. And we're going to trivialize the finalization. It's something that we'll do. And then sometimes they'll be able to move on. It's appropriate. So these are really great visibility. Also, really great for applicants to websites. And there's many more Google forums, emails, and then what you're doing. And we're definitely just trying to get as much visibility on them because people searching for business on Google. You're going to be able to look at real estate and getting a search of pages. Which always looks good. You know, some of these have been around for a while. It's just you know, better than seeing. Okay, so. Moving on, our next section is finding customers. So let's have a look here. So this is probably um, a direct review you've seen before. This is a marketing funnel. So um, this is a digital funnel. What we're trying to do is attract customers at the top and nurture them time to um, get them to convert. That is buying a product from you, um, visiting a restaurant, um, if you're doing a search experience, you work with that company. And as you know, keep in touch on this can be a uh, quite short process. You know, maybe it takes a long time to make a decision. Maybe it takes a long time to make a decision. And it's better based on what your business does. And then I'll talk to you now. Oh, goodness, no. Is um, the inbound marketing funnel. So you can see here we've got awareness, consideration, version, um, and this is a touch customer will help you for converting. That's more traditional about inbound marketing funnel. But something that the inbound marketing concept is more to one is to someone who wants to you and help you continue to utilize that. So the second part of loyalty, as you can see, a thin is really having the process of marketing is a digital one-time purchase. Um, and the reason we say that is actually acquiring a new customer every time can cost five times more than retaining an existing customer. So what we really want to do is if this person has got through the funnel, then they're a key purchaser, this is just depending on what the service is all about. And if you can do more people, then we can talk about us and just kind of, you know, get that by reach out there of what we're doing. And um, so that's just something that we want to think about is getting that first information, right, that first person is always great, probably end back again, and again, again, and again, Okay, and a few things that, um, you know, just the funnel going down like this. Uh, what we're talking about here is the same thing, the event decision at the top half of the funnel, and then afterwards, we'll see that, we'll see here, we'll see the difference. And the reason I want to show you this is the two things to think about when you're creating content, when you're creating content, when you reach out to customers. And the first half is what we call the buyer's journey. That's someone in the consideration phase, getting the information they need to make that first conversion with you. And the customer journey is what you do post purchase to retain, design, and continue to deliver experience to the customer. Um, and something that feeds into that approach, so that's called customer experience, is a customer centric approach. And these kind of go hand in hand really thinking about your know, content strategy and how you're going to convert to potential prospects to customers. Um, can you do your business as well? 
yeah, um, but I think it's one of the things that's very easily lost um, when thinking about I need to grow my business and sell more, I need more sales. Um, you kind of lose sight of, of the actual customer itself. And so it's really about trying to bring that focus back and then cover some of the points that um, I've been on the previous slide. So I think about a customer, what stage of the journey you're on. If you're in business um, and that purchase process is a little bit more uh, you know, stretched out, drawn out, then um, are they just fishing around information? Um, are they just looking for different options and not really the yet? If you kind of know how to talk to them, you're not going to go straight away to the kill and then get in over contract design. You can actually provide them with more information that actually helps them make that decision and consider your business. Um, the part there is about the customer experience that Rachel also mentioned is um, you have to get yourself in their shoes and go, well, what, what do they want from this whole um, experience with you? Uh, or no, it's sometimes it's not even with you, it's actually about the whole experience of buying the actual product. Um, and so again, um, it kind of changes the way that you look at things, and then the more that you can put yourself in issues, the better you can actually talk to them, um, and the better you can sort of give them what they want, and then they'll come to you. That third one then is about customer value. So um, yeah, sometimes value means price, sometimes value means um, you know, getting a discount, um, but sometimes it's, it's not just about monetary, it's about all the other things that go with it. Um, so it could be a bundle, it could be ease of uh, service, it could be convenience, it could be location. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a number of those things, that if you bring all of that together, um, ideally if you can manage to understand it all, um, it will help you better target them and position your business for their consideration. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, I'm just kind of bringing that concept um, also back to the the funnel um, is content marketing. So this is making sure that you are giving the prospects the, the right message at the right time. Um, and you know, that can be difficult at times. You know, you've got to really map out what you think they need at different stages. Um, and it does mean you've got to create content that maybe you on a website, maybe you on social. And um, it's just really considering as um, getting in touch on what does the customer need and at what stage. So this is just an example of the awareness stage. Um, you know, the prospect is experiencing symptoms or a problem or an opportunity. So they're in the very early phases then of sorting them out. In consideration, pay at that stage. Um, you know, they've identified the problem and they're really seeking the solution to the problem. So it's what information can be given from them. And the decision phase, it's you know, not decided on the method of approach and it's probably comparing it to competitors. Now, you know, that's a very simple um, Example, it does completely depend on your type of business. For example, if someone is trying to book a restaurant already pretty far down in the decision process that they're hungry, they need to go somewhere for food, and they need to just find somewhere to go and do it. Uh, whereas other things just keeps in touch on the take a longer time to nurture, which might be a bigger investment and sign up for a membership somewhere, you know, the take for a 12 month period, things like that, and we'll probably go through a bit more of this journey. Similarly, here, I'm lead nurturing. Uh, you know, this is something I'm quite passionate about um, in what I do. It's making sure that I do drip feed all of the right content that customer needs to make an informed and comfortable decision in whatever their investment might be. And, you know, developing um, relationships and delivering them lots of different content at different stages of the funnel. So, this is a really easy concept to kind of digest is that you want to educate and believe in your prospects. I'm using different terminology here. Um, educate them about what you do, why you choose you, what are the benefits of choosing you over someone else, what your unique selling points. Um, inform them. So, we're kind of tying back to finding the answer to a problem or giving them a solution. Um, you're really informing them more about you know, what your offering does. Um, and engage, you know, engage to me could be something like here's a review, here's a case study of someone else using the, you know, our service, our product, whatever it might be. Um, and then that would eventually lead to, hopefully, conversions over time. So just kind of tie all of that in together, and as we discussed before, the buyer journey is pre-purchase, and the customer journey is post-purchase. And it's bringing together those concepts of content marketing, which is delivering them the right content, the right messaging, the right time in their journey, and customer centricity, which is making sure you're giving your customer everything they need to make that decision. And here's a few examples of how your content or your strategy makes that either side of the conversion funnel. So if someone's in the buyer journey and you know, they're opening you out, they're looking for a solution to a problem, they might want to read your FA, your frequently asked questions. Um, you know, before they call you, and you know, I'm going on their website and see what's their frequently asked questions. And they might want to watch a how-to video with you know, either using your services or you know, showing your own shop with a how-to video or things like that. And uh, they might, as we just touched on, once you use testimonials from other customers that have chosen to engage with your business. Um, case studies, you know, a bit more detailed, um, sometimes more in the business to business market rather than business to consumer. Um, but they're a really great um, addition to your content strategy. Similarly, lots, you know, for the local businesses, telling stories, updates on what's been going on in the area, or, you know, things that have changed in your business recently, or we've got a new person that works here, meet so and so. Lots of really great ways to keep your website looking fresh, um, and it's always best practice to kind of keep things updated on your website as well. Um, in addition to that, someone might want to talk with an expert, talk with a representative in your business, and just making sure as we touched on that you're contactable, and that is something you know, clear call to action on your website or your socials or you know, wherever that might be, that yeah, we're here, come and talk to us. And also, in some cases, product comparisons, uh, that really depend on what your offering is, um, but kind of saying this is why we're the best at what we do, and um, you know, it's always going to get some traction from the process. So that's kind of what we do to convince them to purchase with you, to engage with you. And then after that, it's what can we keep doing to delight, as one of the examples of the customer. So um, if you have on an e-commerce website or someone's come and had, you know, you've got a reservation at a restaurant and they come and um, you can send an ultimate email saying, thank you for purchase or thank you for visiting our restaurant. We hope you enjoyed your meal or your, your history, your delivery reservation you're in a few days. Um, don't think about that. Definitely that's great. And you've also been in for you guys. Um, leave a review. You know, if you strategically contact someone, next amount of time after receiving your goods, using your goods, and then it'll be a great time to buy from you. Customers can keep building up ahead of time to make sure they review the website or Google My Business are up to date and for the new customers that come into your funnel as well. Um, we've also got um, booking completions in mind, just something particularly about this. You know, I've got something in advance, and I've told a couple of for a while, people might actually go into it, you know, click yes, you confirm, click this to reschedule. And I, I personally really enjoy them, and I think I find them a bit more, but I'm able to get that into my calendar as well, I'm over time, and I can set the locations again to make a really seamless experience for the customer, and very, very low maintenance for you. And um, I think it's just a nice referral offer. So, you know, they come, they shop with you, hey, here's 10% off either on the next order, or here's 10% off you and a friend. You know, really great way to get people back if it is a, a journey where they can repeat buy from you, um, and also bring more people into the mix. Um, and another one is a loyalty program. So completely depending on which services, but you know, even coffee stamped business cards, you know, get your 10th coffee free. If there's anything you can do like that to get people coming back to you, um, you can do that. That's more in the traditional way. But if you do have an e-commerce website and people can buy stuff from you online, there's so, so many platforms out there that you can integrate with your website um, to deliver a loyalty program of some description. Okay. So just to kind of tie that all together, um, you know, it's kind of like, okay, all of those concepts are great, but sitting down and actually mapping out um, the technique in itself, and that's called customer journey mapping. So to understand what your customer needs when and what motivates them to make a purchase, what will delight them to come back again, you have really got to put yourself in the mind of the customer.
side of things going through the buying process you know how many times do you think you might communicate with someone before they buy is it one of those quicker more impulsive purchases like kingston touched on or is it something where they do need to read a couple of logs and they do want to see a couple of reviews before they can purchase from you and that ties into the user actions so what are all those we call the touch points along the way that will likely convert your prospect into a customer um, emotions, pain points, solutions. It's really thinking about what your customer needs, thinking back to that customer centric approach and making sure that you're answering those questions before they have to come and ask you. So are your social media posts saying these are the three benefits to, you know, a healthy green smoothie, come and get it from a cafe, you know, whether that may be, answer the question for them before they're having to come and ask you for it. Because something that, um, this is the tricky bit with it, right? Is that you think, okay, well, they'll just call us if they have a question, but actually calling a business or sending an email is quite far down that marketing funnel you know it's not in that awareness and consideration phase and uh, that's really where they want all of their answers delivered to them before they've even had to contact you to answer them so they're already quite far down the funnel with intent to do something if they're calling you or emailing you so what i would just say is think about the common questions you get asked by people who come into your shop or business uh, we get customer service emails what are they asking um you know, those DMs in your Instagram or Facebook accounts and think, okay, we often get asked, you know, how much is this or how long will it last for? Or, you know, when's the best time to come in? And then try and preempt those questions in your content strategy. Um, but anyway, that whole process is part of what we call customer journey mapping. This is a template here that's free that you can go and download and just start mapping out, um, you know, what you think your customer needs to get down the funnel and into that conversion phase. <laughs> I'll just make one quick comment yeah. there. Um, you know, it might seem like a lot of work, but um, you know, this is kind of a, a process that a lot of businesses go through. And if you do take time to go through it and apply it to your business, your situation, um, it, it definitely works. And so I guess this is a cool a tool that's tried and tested. Um, so if you do have the time and you're serious about trying to, to map out um, your customer journey, then I definitely would suggest having a go at this. Sure. Okay. So yeah, just to summarize a few kind of key takeaways from what we just discussed there is, um, if possible, don't rely on just one digital channel to acquire new customers on. Now, this does depend on you know how much time you have to um, invest in your channels. You know, it, it does take a bit of time to run a couple social media accounts and a website and a booking system. Um, but the more places you are, the more places you can attract and convert customers. Um, as we've just touched on in in depth, implementing a customer journey marketing strategy content marketing strategy to deliver the right content content based on their stage in the funnel so you know this is something that kingston will do with all of our clients um and it'll take a bit of time but you just kind of do it you know one persona one ideal customer at a time um and just do it in bite-sized chunks but it's a really great concept to try and follow um and don't forget about your customers once they've converted you know continue to delight and nurture them as we've said because they are extremely valuable people that can either be advocates to you know recommend your services to other people or come back as repeat purchases okay so lead generation then we're going to jump in here to a few techniques so when i refer to organic lead generation uh this is kind of the things that are either free or very low cost to you and your business to try and attract um you know people uh, prospects to your offering so um we've obviously got here a, a sign up form that you can see on a website, you know, enjoy 15% off for free shipping. If you're an e-commerce site, it's quite a learning behavior um, that you get an offer for a first time purchase. Um, so it's a great tactic to set that up on your website. Um, I've got here collaborations with local businesses. So I very often, you know, I live in Randwick, I live in a spot. If I go into one cafe, they've got business cards or something for the other business. Or they're like, hey, this is 10% off at the Ritz Cinema. Um, you know, so going around the local businesses when it's appropriate or when you might have a similar clientele and say, hey, because you come here, you can actually go and get 20% off the gift shop around the corner or vice versa. And so I think that's a really great relationship building to do in your local area. And we've also got here, refer a friend, as we've just spoken to, you know, with those people that have become a customer, refer someone back to us and we're going to give something to both of you for coming back here. Um, We've got here as well, Google My Business, which we've touched on, just having as many call to actions on there as possible, whether it's book now, button, call me, that is lead generation. Those people who are going to get in touch with you because your visibility is there. And on the right hand side here, we've got signing up to your newsletter, you know, give them value. And um, if it's something that you can do a monthly newsletter, a fortnight newsletter, um, then if people see the value in your business and what you're writing about, then that's a great way to get email addresses. And then you can match them over time, updates about your new product offerings, opening times, you know, things like that. Um, on the bottom left here, I've put social media, book now, shop now. Um, so some of you might have come to our social media workshop 
uh, a couple of weeks ago, but if not, um, I would just recommend you go on your business profile and look at the functionalities available to you. So if you do have an e-commerce website, for example, you can have a viewable shop within Instagram and Facebook, uh, which means that all of your products can be viewed by someone in those platforms rather than coming to your website, which is great. But alternatively, having a book mail button to your reservation system um, or something similar. So definitely just utilize all of the real estate you can on your social platforms. Um, running competitions and giveaways is a really great way to expand your reach organically. So all your existing customers that might follow you on Facebook or Instagram, you know, share this, do this, and we're going to give away this. You don't attract a lot of new people onto your social media following, which will then over time be able to drip feed, you know, your new products, your opening times, things that can come and engage with you. Um, and I kind of touched on, you know, those um, window display special offers um, are very engaging for your foot traffic. So definitely, if you have the space to do it and you have the offer to do it, shout it from the rooftops. And on the bottom right hand corner here, we've got what we call gated content or make your own quiz now, things like this. So um, it really does depend on what your industry is. But gated content is a great way to get email addresses, which you can then nurture over time. So it would be very valuable if you do have a database or you do have a newsletter that you sent out. They're making something of value, but it is of value to a large group of people in your time audience. And going like that quickly, for example, would be a really great way to obtain new email addresses that you can nurture over time. Okay, so paid lead generation tips would require an advertising budget um, for you to run things on maybe um, Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, if you're more of a business to business industry. Um, and there's lots of great things you can do. So, for example, if you wanted to get more people to your website viewing your products, you could do a Facebook traffic campaign and get loads of traffic to your website. And um, if you had the money, you could do Google, Google Ads, uh, which you can see here with the, you know, with the candles. Um, that's the search right there. We can see there's a lot of rating, there's some great call to actions. But in addition to that, you could also run the Google Shopping campaign, which is where people are already searching for products um, and you can't get to competitors there, maybe, um, and get clicks through to your website and your products. Um, a great way to actually get physical leads, so that's your email addresses with contact numbers, is you can see an example up here on the top right, it's like a lead generation campaign. Um, we've had loads of success with this, we've got big businesses, we've got small businesses, um, and this is a great way to give an offering, you know, we've got 10% off, um, we actually did these on gated content for schools, you know, it was a mental health awareness booklet, um, and they gave us their email address and we sent it to that, and we had loads of people sign up for that. So it really can be used to so many different things, you can also just want to do newsletter subscribers, you know, not getting enough subscribers from the website, how can I get more people on my list? So you can run lead generation campaigns on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and even TikTok, um, so it's very easy to use, a great way to top up your leads, your, the amount of leads you have in your database. Um, I've got here radio, you know, from a local area, marketing point of view, radio ads, obviously you can do newspaper ads, if you see value in that, um, but for particularly um, more offers, you might be running at certain times, you know, cyber weekend, people cyber weekend online, where we run loads of promotions, but you might just do, I've got 20% off this time, or, you know, different offers, um, and have the money, you can always invest in that, and the bottom right hand example is influencer marketing, so in my world of social media, some of the lot of brands use, you know, they get people in their target audience to promote their products, but from a local perspective, you could get um, people that are your area um, to speak about, you know, maybe people from the council, or, you know, people who are in your local area to talk about your business, come engage into your business on a more local level. Okay, so I very short time, so I'll read this. I want to make sure that we give you 10 minutes to ask some questions if you have them. Uh, this is just really speaking to managing customers. So, um, you know, we're trying to attract lots of customers with more customers, there's more things to manage, and you might only be a one or two man band that's trying to do all of this. Um, and there's a few ways to make this as easy and seamless as possible for yourself. And that's making sure that your platforms integrate well with each other, they speak well to each other, um, and it's easy to connect them. Um, and you know, that you might be a business that needs several platforms. So, for example, you have a customer relationship management tool, and you also have an email marketing automa or automation tool. You might have a point of system, a point of sale system, sorry, in your shop or your business locally. Um, so, this is a tricky bit. This is quite a technical thing that you've got to get right. But if you can match, you know, the right platform with the right website or e-commerce website, it's going to make your life so much easier. And to that point, you may not need all of these. You know, solutions are out there now where you can manage all of your customers and email them all at once. So, for example, HubSpot or Caviar make it really easy to kind of manage all your customers and communicate with them and integrate seamlessly with Shopify and Facebook for advertising, whereas other ones can be a bit more difficult to connect. Um, so, if you, you know, if you have any questions after this, you can let us know in particular. You can find things a little bit trickier. Um, but what we want to do is make it very easy for you to automate things. For example, a thank you email once someone's been to your business, shopped online, had a reservation with you. Um, Kate, did you have anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, look, I, mean, I think for, for many businesses, so I'm alone here, um, there are so many software offers that, that are on the market. Um, and, and that's the biggest challenge is, is there are new software platforms every month um, coming from all over the world. So I guess you, you have a lot of choice. Um, the great thing is you can start small, um, mm -hmm. lots of free uh, or small business focused uh, platforms, and then they go all the way up to medium sized businesses, and then you have enterprise levels uh, depending on, on your business needs. Um, the key is to just start at We are living in a digital age. Everyone walks around with um, everyone's mobile, everyone has access to the internet, everyone's so um, people now have not just one email, but they have several emails, um, and they, they have lots of platform accounts. So it, it, our personal lives shouldn't be different from our business lives. In the terms of, um, you know, don't run your business where you don't accept and understand these things. Because when somebody walks in the door, um, for the right offer and for the right situation, they'll gladly over their mobile phone uh, to you if you're going to offer you or you their mobile phone. Um, their, your sorry, uh, they will give you their address to you so you can continue to communicate with them um, or or their home address if you're sending e-commerce. So the idea is try and pick the uh, tech platforms that make sense to you. Um, the integration part is definitely where you need to do the reading uh, or you need to engage someone who, who can kind of bring it all together. Mm. Once you do bring it all together, the word that um, Rachel uh, mentioned around automation, I mean, that, that's the whole route. Once you get this automated and the computer will do the work for you, it doesn't matter if somebody is reaching out to you at 1 a.m. on a Sunday morning because that's when they want to contact you in a shop. Um, you know, your systems will 
do the work for you. You don't physically have to be there uh, and execute yourself. So, and that's that's kind of the 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 holy grail of what we want to get to for business. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And yeah, do I refer to aut automations? Uh, you know, that is things that are delivered to customers in real time based on how they're engaging with your brand. And you know, there's an element of that that is personalised emails, um, and these are called behavioural. So based on um, you know an action based um, engagement. So if someone's done something on your website, they've completed a purchase, um, or they've left something in their cart, um, something like that is action based. So something would trigger automatically to remind that customer to take an action or to thank them for having an action. Um, and that is personal and timely. So that is the concept that we want to think about when we're thinking about what can we automate for our customers and bringing that back again to customer centricity, which is, you know, are we giving the customer everything they need at the right time? Um, and, you know, just an interesting stat here is that 41% of consumers switched businesses due to a lack of personalization. So if you are an online business, um, this is definitely something um, to really look into um, and start mapping out. Um, and here's just a few examples of traditional automations, you know, something called a welcome series is, hey, thanks for joining our newsletter. And maybe trigger two or three emails over a certain amount of time to introduce your brand, who you are, what you do, why, why is there value in being a newsletter subscriber with your business? Um, as we just touched on, abandoned cart is a you know, 101 of e-commerce businesses. You know, if someone had put something in their cart and has a purchase, you want to be reminded of them a few hours later, hey, you left it behind, come back and buy. Um, thank you emails can be used at so many different stages of a customer's life, lifetime with you. Um, and definitely a nice thing to have. Um, and birthday messages, maybe, or, you know, a reminder of you purchased from us for the first time a year ago, or you were last in our restaurant six months ago, do you want to come back? We've got a new menu, you know, whatever that might be. Um, and product reviews, you know, as we touched on earlier, triggering something at the ideal time post-purchase, um, which will delight the customer, but also, you know, get something back for you, whether that's a referral, product review, whatever that might be. Um, and, you know, this, again, is on the more technical side, is, you know, your database of leads is going to be growing. And are you managing them in the best way? So, you know, this is just an example of many of you might be able of what tagging customers look like. You've got here shop sales, conference lead, out of state. Um, thinking about your customers and tagging them appropriately will make it much easier for you to communicate with them in the future on offers or um, things that are changing in your business that might be more relevant to some rather than others. And the more you tag, the easier it is to segment. So if you tag all of your customers, you can then say, right, I want to send this email to all of my customers that have come to my Sydney restaurant um, because we've got a new menu in Sydney, but not in Melbourne, for example. So um, this is there's loads of literature out there on tagging and segmentation. So I'll just do a bit of Google and get that 101 best practice uh, because it's very hard to go back and make everything look right. But if you start now with good practice, it's going to make life so much easier further down the line. Um, and just the last point on this, um, and this is quite technical, but for those of you that use an iPhone, you might have realised that you're getting asked if you want your data to be tracked these days. Now, initially, that just made um, a bit of, yeah, the biggest impact really on social media. Uh, do you want to be tracked whilst you're using this app? Yes or no? Um, that stops people having as much visibility on how you're engaging with their business. Um, so just something to be mindful of is that as, you know, um, the iPhones and what we call iOS is the software, um, changes over time, you might not actually be able to see how many people are opening your emails or, or not as true as it has been previously. Uh, people might decide to keep that information private. You know, I don't want to you open this email. Okay, that's, that's your choice. So if you are segmenting your database more specifically or tagging customers better, it doesn't really matter too much. Did they open my last email a week ago or not? You don't want to communicate with them because that's the message that's more relevant to them, the type of customer they are. So yeah, um, it's, it's, it's own realm segmentation and tagging. Um, so lots to be read and learned in that space. But yeah, just don't necessarily completely rely on your open rates if you can avoid it because you might not get um, as much data in that space as you currently are moving forward. Okay, so sorry, we've only got a few minutes left, but we're happy to stay on and answer any questions. Um, but that was quite a lot to, to get through. I had to speed up how fast I was talking towards the end, so sorry if it was hard to take in. So anyway, we will hand over to you guys if you have any questions, and um, we are more than happy to answer them. If you want to ask a question, you can put your hand up or you can put it in the chat or you can just unmute yourself and talk as well. Um, guys, it's uh, Aaron here. Uh, I've got to Hi. go to another webinar. Uh, that was excellent again. So the fourth of the fourth, the fourth part of the fourth uh, 
a series, I'll say. Um, many thanks for that. Some good information for me. Uh, as I, I think I mentioned to Kingston and Rachel last week, that I work for a, a, a large company and we've got a huge IT crew at the like. Mm. But this was mostly for my own edification and I really appreciate this. So um, uh, I, I need to sign off, but uh, many thanks, guys. Thank you for your feedback and thanks for coming. Well done, guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you. So, Kathy and Arthur, over to you guys. Is there anything, you know, specific to your business that you'd like to ask us? And um, if you feel comfortable or, yeah, just anything else that we can help you with today? Nothing. Oh, it's Arthur here. I, um, yeah, just getting the head around the sales funnel, I think. I know there's a lot of tools out there. It's just the time to get my head around. Is there any pointers you can suggest? Uh, yeah. to get your head around the sales funnel. Is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, look, I, I think the 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 first thing would just be try to picture yourself. Um, you know, do, you know, put yourself as the customer, um, and think about some of the things that you're buying, uh, and then follow some of those journeys to go. Um, if you're, you know, you've got a purchase that's coming up, maybe it's for Christmas, maybe it's um, uh, purchasing a car or, or some sort of item. Um, and then as you go through that funnel, um, you can think about what are the things that you would actually want to know or do at that particular point. Uh, and then you can actually test that against uh, some retailers or, or also some people that you're going to be buying off. And you can actually see what they do uh, well or, or not well. Um, and those are, are great then pointers to come back to you and, and go, well, I'm a particular customer. I've got to the awareness stage. But in actual fact, I, I, I can't even find um, particular businesses and, and who who sells that product mm. or I, I can find their website, but then once I'm on their website, I can't actually find the product that I'm looking for. Um, and so those are, they become tips uh, of then thinking about your business and what you're trying to do for your customers. Um, and, and it's a, it's a nice way there. And then you can follow that down all the way through to the conversion point of going, um, you're a particular type of customer. You're going to buy, um, what information do you want? What action do you want? What do you want them to do to get you uh, to, to give, you know, hand over your cash uh, to them? Uh, and sometimes actually it's, it's quite funny that um, a lot of people are ready to, to part with their cash, um, but businesses don't pick up on that very quickly and, and they don't, they don't fulfill that. Deal the deal. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Yeah. If I um, find something that's similar. Yeah. I'm just yeah, yeah. on that, Arthur, um, a really great resource that, you know, I've referred to many times um, when I'm trying to get my head around these concepts um, is called the HubSpot Academy. So they actually have, similar to this, kind of workshops that you can go through at your own pace um, on the concept of maybe inbound marketing or the sales funnel. Um, they're free, many of them, um, and you can just kind of flip through. They'll do examples and many of the kind of infographics that we're showing you in a visual way, videos and then some kind of um, multiple choice questions at the end to kind of test your knowledge. Um, so whenever you're trying to digest the concept to then be able to go and do what um, Kingston's talking about mapping out to you, um, I find them really helpful. So that's called HubSpot Academy. Yeah, yeah. Now I suppose it won't matter if you're testing because um, unless, unless you're pointing people to your sales funnel, um, you can test it easy enough and see if it works. That's it. Yeah. If, you don't, if you don't have any links, no one's going to locate it. It'd be very, it'd be a fluke for them to locate it on the internet. Mm. Exactly. exactly. That's I think that's my main thing: get, getting it set up and um, just just making it work before making it perfect, sort of thing. So get it out there, get it working, and then um, improving it. Yeah, definitely. that's it. Yeah. And look, a, a point on that is um, anytime you launch something, it's never going to be perfect. And mm -hmm. so, um, you, you know, one of the things that we always go uh, talk about is test and learn and optimization, which is kind of, you know, fluffy, fancy words for, you know, make mistakes and learn from them. Mm -hmm. um, so put something out and let your customers tell you what they want. Um, and so you could, you could spend a lot of time designing the ultimate funnel, um, but then all of a sudden a customer comes along and, and, you know, they tell you different otherwise. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, they're the ones that, you know, want what you have and, and they're going to pay you for it. So over time, um, what you want is, is this improvement of your funnel. So start and then just listen, learn and adjust. 
um, and you, know, you get you feedback can, from customers. Yeah, you can put a few out there to, and see which one works best and then concentrate on that one too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Exactly. Excellent. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Nice, nice. Excellent. Well, Gabby, hand, hand back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much to Kingston and to Rachel for presenting that. It was really interesting and I think we all learned a lot. Um, this session has been recorded. It is the last of the four and it will be going on to our YouTube channel for Hunters Hill Council under the workshops playlist. So you can watch it there and I will be sending the link out to this to everyone who registered for this talk. So thank you to Digital Mavens for presenting this series. It's been fabulous and really interesting. And I think we've all learned a lot across social media and and websites and e-commerce as well as the seeking for leads and generating leads. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll end this here and thank you so much. And um, we'll see you. you next time we run workshops. Thank, thank you. you. We really enjoyed the experience. So thank, thank you. you. See ya. Bye. -bye. Bye.